All right, let's start with exercise 34. Now this one's a little longer, so I have my window open to let some cool air in so that my laptop doesn't explode. So you might hear a little bit of stuff from outside, hopefully not, and if so, hopefully it won't be too bad. Anyways, so here's the problem, and we're actually first going to skip over part B because look at this. What happens if... um. Uh, if there are no points where f and g are both discontinuous, well, okay, that just means that they're continuous, and so f of x is going to equal f of x minus everywhere, and so then the this divided by 2 is just going to cancel out, and you're just going to get f of x, and so this is going to be exactly this, and same thing, this is going to be exactly this, and this is going to stay the same, and so it follows very easily from part A. So all we're going to do is prove part A, and part A takes a little time, so it's not a completely, um, it's not a complete waste of time to include B. So let's see here. Proof by Theorem 3.27 um, Any um, function of bounded variation is the difference of two bounded increasing functions. Therefore, we may assume f and g, uh, not only are they of normalized bounded variation, but that they are increasing. And this is because if we were to write, let's see here, F, e f equal f1 minus f2, where f1 and f2 are both increasing, then if we look at this formula, everything's going to be the same if we replace f with f1 and f2. All of these things are linear. And so if it holds for, let's see here, let's write that out again, f equals f1 minus f2. If this equation holds when f and g are both increasing, then it will hold for f1 and, um, then it will hold for f1 and it'll hold for f2, and if we were to do the same thing for capital G, so basically it would hold even if f and g were not necessarily increasing, but just a normal bounded variation. But anyways, let's make this restriction that they are increasing. Let us, ooh, give me a second here. That should be good. Still doing it, hold on. All right. Let us integrate over T, where T is going to be this region. I'm just going to draw it out instead of writing down what everything is. So this A, B, and B, we're going to be integrating over this region over here. So this is the, let's see here, if we were to extend this a little, this is the x-axis here, and this is the y-axis, and so this is the line y equals x. 
And so we're just integrating over that triangle. Um, now, you may assume f and g are greater than or equal to zero. Because when we look at the general case of, um, say, f in normalized bound of variation, then f equals one half tf plus f minus one half tf minus f, where the two functions on the right are increasing and uh, evaluate to zero at minus infinity. Why is that? That is because we know that t of f is defined in such a way that as you go to minus infinity, it the tf goes to minus infinity. But then for f, um, because f is in normalized bound of variation, that's just what it means. It means that not only is it a bound of variation, but as you go to minus in as you go to minus infinity, the value of the function approaches zero. And remember, we're considering f and g to be normalized bound of variation and increasing because we want to consider the general case of f and g in normalized bound of variation. Um, and so really what we're doing is we're applying the result to these two functions here. These are the ones that we want to look at. And since these ones are strict, are uh, going to be greater than or equal to zero, all the time because they're zero at minus infinity and they're increasing, therefore they're always greater than or equal to zero. So then it really, um, it suffices to just look at functions which are increasing and which are always greater than or equal to zero. So anyways, then by Tonelli's theorem, integrating um, the indicator function on t with respect to the measure mu f then mu g is the same as integrating the indicator on t with respect to mu g and then mu f. And that's because if f and g are going to be positive, then these measures are basically, are everything here is going to be positive, and so you can flip the orders of integration. And so that all works out nicely. So now let's actually compute some stuff. So let's first integrate over um, t, first integrating in the x direction and then, well, integrating in the y direction on the inside and x direction on the outside. So integrating from a to b, integrating from x to b, d mu capital F of y, d mu capital G of x. So let's just check that this makes sense. We're integrating x from a to b, and for each fixed x, we're integrating y from whatever x was up to b. So that makes sense. So this is going to be basically integrating over all of t. And then this is equal to integral from a to b, and then what is this thing by definition? This is just mu f of x b d mu g x. But then what is this going to be equal to? Well, if we look at this thing, we know that mu f, in general, mu f of, let's see here, let's just say s and t is equal to f t minus f S. And so if we were to make this a closed bracket, 
then what we can do is we can like take a sequence of SNs decreasing to S and what this will give us over here is this will give us F of S minus in the limit. And so what this is equal to is this is equal to the integral of, from A to B of FB minus Fx minus d mu g of x. And so now what can we do from here? From here we have this is equal to integral from a to b f of b d mu g minus integral from a to b f of x minus d mu g that's just splitting it up then this is equal to f of b can come out front and the um, remaining integral becomes g b minus g of a minus for the same reason that this became the f of x minus here um, we're just going to do this without like explaining it from here on out because we do this sort of calculation a lot in this problem minus the integral from a to b f of x minus d mu g Similarly, we have, what else can we compute? We can compute in the other direction. So we can compute from A to B, then from A to Y. There we go. D mu G X, D mu F Y equals, let's just make sure. Um, so Y from A to B and then X from A to Y. So Y goes from A to B then for each of those fixed y's, we take x from a up to y, which is going to be this line. So that is indeed where we want to integrate. So this integral, this is equal to integral from a to b here. I'll scroll up a little bit so that you can compare this, because this is going to be very similar to the computation we just did. This integral, gy minus ga minus d mu f variable is y, so then this is equal to integral a to b, gy d mu f y minus the integral from a to b of g a minus d mu f y, and then we come back over here, this is equal to the integral from a to b of gy d mu f y minus g a minus and this becomes f b minus f a minus combining these equations yields and why can we combine these equations again we can combine these these because these two things here are equal that's supposed to be a really long equal sign and these two are equal because that's just Tonelli's uh, yeah Tonelli you just flip the order of integration and so this is good and then we basically have this, so we have this thing is equal to this thing so let's write what that looks like so we bring Let's see here, if we were to put the integral from a to b of gy d mu f y on this side, and we want to bring all the integrals on the same side, so we have this integral is equal to this thing, and if we were to bring this term over to this side, we would have to add it. So plus integral from a to b f x minus d mu g, and this is going to be equal to Let's see here, if this is on this side, then this is going to be on the correct side. So this is f of b, gb minus g, a minus, and then this would come over to here, so it would become a plus, so plus g, a minus, f of b, minus f, a minus. Um, but now here we already have some cancellation. We've, get, we've got this um, fb, my, we've got this negative FBGA minus here, and that's going to cancel with this um, positive FBGA minus, and so we're going to get FBGB minus FA minus GA minus. 
Okay, so this is already starting to look promising. That's the thing on the right was what we had over here, but we've still got these thingies that we have to worry about. Now, fortunately, this is actually there. there there's a trick here that you have to use, and this is um, note that these results are symmetric in F and G. That's because when we were doing all these calculations, there wasn't anything about F and G. Um, there wasn't any reason we chose them in the order that we did. They're completely symmetric. They are defined to be exactly satisfying the same properties. And so, therefore, we also have the above equation, but with all the f's and the g's flip. So what would that look like? That's integral from a to b of f of y d mu g, respect to y, plus a b g x minus d mu f. And this is equal to, well, we're going to flip the f's and the g's on the right side, so let's just write out what that looks like. It's g of b, f of b, minus g of a minus, f of a minus, but of course, these, multiplication is commutative, and so the right-hand side here is basically the same. So now we have these two equations. Adding these equations and dividing by 2 yields. Well, what's going to happen to the left side? Um, let's combine the like things, so we're going to end up combining these two terms. So we're going to have in this integral plus this integral, but we're integrating over the same region and with respect to the same measure. So we can bring everything inside, and like, of course, here this is f of y, and here this is f of x minus, but of course, the, those are just dummy variables, and so we can call them, let's see here, not to spoil too much, but what variable did we use? We used x throughout here. Okay, so this becomes integral from a to b of, so here we've got f of x plus f of x minus, this all over 2 d mu g, then plus the integral from a to b of, similar thing with the g's, we've got um, g of x, plus g of x minus, this whole thing divided by 2, d mu f, this is of course d mu g of x, d mu f of x, and what is this equal to? Well, this thing is just the same thing as this thing, and so if you add something to itself and divide by 2, you're going to get what you started with. So this is f of b, g of b minus, f of a minus, g of a minus. Well, huh, you look at this and you notice that it's literally exactly what we wanted. And so, therefore, what that means is that we finished the proof.